Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Trifecta Handgun, the YouTube channel. Hey, we're going to be starting to shift our strategy up a little bit more as the season starts to get a little bit closer. It's July today. It's really super hot outside and it's muggy. We had some thunderstorms coming through earlier today. So I'm going to stick with filming this inside. There's uh, mosquitoes out there that are very, very bad right now in our area in Indiana. So if you live uh, in a place where there's a lot of mosquitoes, you probably understand when they get really bad, even out in the sunlight, they'll carry you away. We'll be shifting our strategy as the season gets closer to more about talking about the handgun rest and a little bit away from talking about the guns in general. I still have videos coming up where I do want to talk about the different types of guns that you can use for handgun hunting, but we'll be concentrating the next probably two, three, four videos are going to be concentrating on the handgun rest, what it is, how to use it. We offer a couple different models. So the differences in those two, and if you're thinking about getting one, Maybe after all this, you'll know which one that you should get. And uh, all I can stress right now is that you should be thinking about preparation as far as practicing now to go into the season so you'll be fully prepared when it's time to actually go out in the field and hunt. So the first thing you may be asking yourself if you're new to this or even if you've been doing it for a while is, do I even need a handgun rest? And I'll tell you my take on this is, let's say you and I met at the trailhead and we're both handgun hunters. We, we never talked to each other before. And you look at the stuff I have and, and uh, maybe your comment is, is, man, I don't know if I want to take all that with me handgun hunting. I'm happy with what I got. And I would not try to convince you otherwise. I think, uh, you know, we're all hunters. We all see things differently, just as people in general. And it is going to be something less to take with you. Maybe you're more of an organic hunter where you're just going to use a tree limb. Or maybe you're going to take a little sandbag or something with you. But maybe you don't want to get involved in a handgun rest. And I fully understand that. And I would not try to talk you out of it. I'd just let you go your own way. Now, if you said that looks compelling to me, interesting, tell me more about it. I would certainly do that. And I would obviously let you try it if there was a, a place to do so. But I'm always into letting everybody do things their own way. All I want to do in these videos coming up is not like try to sell you on the idea, but just present it so you can make up your own mind what you want to do. And we're going to be talking about some run and gun strategies, some uh, more uh, stationary strategies such as a tree stand or a ground blind. We're going to get into all kinds of different strategies to handgun hunt. So when I was designing this rest and the other one, I had three pillars of what they must uh, consist of or what you must be able to do with them in order for it to be a success. The first one's accuracy and everybody talks about accuracy. And uh, of course, we all have a little bit of a diff different definition of that. If you're a thousand yard rifle shooter, you're going to have one definition of accuracy. And if you're just a guy trying to go out and shoot a whitetail, maybe that's something completely different. And maybe you don't have a, a whole lot of time to, to invest in trying to get super accurate and really tighten those groups down to, I don't know, on something under an inch. Maybe that's just not in the cards for you, but that doesn't matter. Accuracy is going to be different for all of us. And to me, accuracy is going to be different by gun. So, you know, you guys may have seen some of my 10 millimeter videos. That's going to be a, a typically a short range pistol all the way up to the seven millimeter 08, which I showed is going to be where I'm going to take the longer range stuff. So this rest, had to be accurate. If I couldn't show you guys that it's accurate, I don't think you would be interested in buying it. If you go back to my videos in the past where I show some shooting, you guys probably know that this rest is pretty accurate, definitely accurate enough to take a whitetail, a hog, or anything larger, obviously. The two other pillars are versatility and portability. What I mean by versatility is you have to be able to maneuver it quickly. It has to be able to go into a lot of situations like 
on the ground or up in a tree stand, things like that. So there's some different strategies, some different components that we're going to add to this stand or take away to be able to do that. But it has to be quick and you have to be able to go into different situations just like you would a rifle. As far as portability goes, and we have two separate uh, handgun rests, and I'll talk about those in a separate video, the differences between the two. But portability, this one happens to be our signature camo rest, and it's pretty lightweight. It's meant to go anywhere. And if you're going to you know, go out west and you're gonna be hiking 10 miles up and down the mountain, ounces become pounds. You want everything to be as light as possible still, while still being able to get the job done. So there are some components that are the same in both of our rests, and I wanna go through those today and just go through a basic overview of the strategy of using a trifecta handgun rest. Let's go ahead and zoom in and I'll show you some of those features. So really the concept or the start of this whole idea of designing and building a handgun rest to hunt with started with this fluid head idea down here. And what a fluid head is, it's normally used with a video camera or a film camera. And they come in all types of sizes and price ranges from, you know, less than $100 all the way up to, you know, $10,000, $30,000, depending what you're trying to do with it and what your budget is for, you know, making a, a movie or whatever. Obviously, a larger camera is going to require a larger fluid head. It's going to have a lot more weight. But what it is it's meant to allow the camera to go frontwards and backwards and side to side in a very fluid motion hence the name and that's this portion right here above the uh, tripod is the fluid head the, the little gold part here that's what allows the rest to go up and down and side to side now the rest that we need for handgun hunting does not have to be super smooth like you would want in the the movies or whatever when you're trying to videotape like a horse going across a field so it can be much less expensive which is great for us the decking of the rest and the bracket are both made out of aluminum and they are powder coated which is a baked on paint so it's going to be fairly durable if you drop this out of the back of your truck onto some rock or pavement it's probably going to chip but other than that, it's going to take a lot of uh, wear and tear. And because it is a quarter inch thick piece of aluminum, it's going to be very durable yet lightweight. This part that the gun is sitting on, the frame of the gun, is what I call the trigger guard guide wheel. And it serves a couple of purposes. Obviously, it's meant to hold the frame of the gun, but it's also meant to absorb some of the shock and, and really improve some of your accuracy just by being this big nylon wheel on here. And it's also very lightweight and it's super, super durable. It does come with a semi disposable rest pad, which is a piece of a uh, fire retardant Velcro on the top. And I've used the same ones for many, many years and they don't tend to wear out. But if you ever need new ones, just uh, send me an email and I will get you some more rushed out at no charge to you. I'll pay the shipping and everything. So if you want a couple more of those, if you are a current or future owner, they come, the rest comes with two of those. So you may want to just hook both of them up to your rest in case you do lose one or you know it eventually does wear out. You can just put the other one into service and get on with it. But how this works is in shooting, we want everything to be consistent, right? So you should be able to just put your gun up there, slam it in there, and you're going to have a point of contact right in front of the trigger guard, hence the trigger guard guide wheel, where you're gonna be consistent every single time, and then you're gonna have it rested on the top, just under your frame if you're shooting a revolver. Let me show you a different type of gun. So this is a Thompson Center Encore. Same thing, just in front of the trigger guard, and then it's gonna rest underneath the frame right there and remain perfectly still. You can adjust the trigger guard guide wheel up and down. There's a, a nut on the other side you can loosen, and this will go up and down. And actually, when you first get your rest, you're going to have to do this because it comes to you loose in the box. You can also move the bracket 
in and out. There's just a couple Allen keys that you have to loosen on the top there and you can move this bracket in and out. So it's very adjustable if you want to do that. I just like to leave it in the factory position all the way up front. It seems to work with every gun. So that's what I do. And then I just bring this trigger guard guide wheel up until my barrel is pretty much level with the platform. The last thing I want to talk about today and the last kind of generic thing to both of our handgun rest is the Control Freak bag. And this I sized, I spent a lot of time actually designing this. I know it's just a bag, but I wanted to design it so that A, it was a, a minimal piece that's going to be lightweight. It's filled with an inorganic bead material which means it will not deteriorate over time. If it gets wet, it will dry out. It's just, uh, they're poly beads. And the material itself, we've changed this year to a more of a waterproof type material. So let me just show you that. It's held on by a piece of hook and loop material. So there's what the bag looks like and you're just going to put that on your rest. And there's some adjustment that I'll show you in a future video coming up, how you want to do that. But what this Control Freak bag is going to do, obviously it's going to hold your gun. And those beads in there are going to take a lot of the shock, a lot of the vibration out of your shot. Just once again, to improve that accuracy. So guys, just a little treat while I was making this video. A couple fawns. You can see one right there and the other one right there. Came out embedded in the yard. They just came out and instantly dropped down like they uh, probably are getting bit by mosquitoes and it's a little bit better out there under the shade tree. So there they are, but it's just a nice little treat to see some wildlife while you're... Uh, it's always kind of fun. I like watching wildlife uh, in season or out. Hey, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you will follow along and join me on the next one. I have some more things coming up. As I said, we're going to talk about the handgun rest. We're going to talk about different strategies to use them. So I hope you will join me. Until then, I will see you on the next one. Oh, here comes the mom.